Okay, okay, okay. Hey, hope you guys are doing great today. And uh, so today we're going to be talking about mass, moles, and molecules. And um, if I give you the mass of something, how many moles is that? And eventually, how many molecules is that? So uh, there'll be a, a series of quest, uh, examples that I'm going to be doing. But one of the things that I might not do is, uh, is to maybe calculate the answers. But uh, I will show you exactly the solution in terms of how to using something known as factor label method. I love this method because with this method, you really don't need formulas. You can calculate anything just as you know how to cancel out units. So let's start. Let's start. So before I begin, okay, uh, I want to talk about a couple of things. First, it's called molar mass. Now, what is that? Well, it's a relationship. Okay, it's a relationship that one mole of a chemical is equivalent to a certain grams of that chemical. So let's say water. Okay, you know, I love to use water as an example and I'll be using water a lot. So this involves two H's and an oxygen. And if you were to look at their atomic mass, in this case, I'm gonna round it to the nearest one. Hydrogen has an atomic mass of one, one, and oxygen has the atomic mass of 16. Now, all together, if you sum that up, that will give you 18. Now, what is 18? If I were to put up a unit for this 18 as a molecular mass unit, a molecular mass unit would have been like 18U or something like that. But when we're talking about molar mass, we are talking about a relationship. And this relationship says this, that it takes 18 grams of water to equivalent one mole of water. So we can say here that molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. So if you were to tell somebody, hey, give me a mole of water, that person would have measured 18 grams for you. If you were to tell somebody, give me two moles of water, I guess that somebody is going to measure you 36 grams of it. Or if somebody said, hey, give me half a mole of water. Hey, that's nine grams of water. You know, you understand what I mean. But that's what molar mass is. Okay? And that's one of the, I guess, um, reasoning, okay, of a relationship between mass and mole. So that's molar mass. The second thing that I want to talk about is what is a mole? <laughs> yeah, you talked about 18 grams of water is equivalent to one mole. If you're talking about NH3, that will be 14 plus 3, that will be 17. So NH3 will have a molar mass of 17 grams per mole. So one mole of NH3 is 17 grams. One mole of water is 18 grams, right? One mole of methane is, uh, I don't know, 16 grams. What is a mole? Now, when I say the word mole, a lot of people think, yeah, yeah, I know what a mole is. It's those little guys that run around the ground, you know, those rodent-like animal, right? A mole. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. You know, that had nothing to do with chemistry. Well, at least I don't think so. But the word mole represents a number. It's just like how I say, hey, what is one dozen? And a lot of people said, hey, a dozen represent 12. If I say, uh, what is a pair? You no, know, the word pair means two. And uh, somebody can easily say, like, oh, uh, what is a case? And usually a case is around, like, 24. It's depending on what, you know, a case of what you're talking about, right? So what is a mole? Well, a mole represents this number. 
6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. In this case, we're talking about particles. Particles represented by, you know, as, as atoms. Particles represented as you know, molecules. Ions. So when I say one mole, you're talking about this many particles. So that's like 602 and then 21 zeros follow after, right? A big, big number. Oh, sounds like a number that I have in my uh, bank account, huh? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, yeah, I wish. But yeah. So that's what one mole means. So when people say, hey, give me a mole of water. Not only are you going to give them 18 grams of water, but you're looking at that many water molecule. Okay, so in an essence, you can even say that 18 grams of water is that many water, that many H2O. Right? 36 grams of water will be this amount times 2 number of H2O. So it's, it's a representation. You know, at the very end, that's what you're really doing is, you know, unit converting. That's exactly what we're going to do, you know, with the examples that I'm going to be going on, uh, going, I guess, giving you. So let's erase all of this. Okay. And let's take a look at some of the examples that I have. So example one, uh, I have, I don't know, 1.08 grams of, uh, let's water. Okay. How many mole is that? All right. We're going to go through this thing called the factor label method. Okay. Obviously there's a formula to calculate this, but we're not going to use no formula. Formula is overrated in my view. We're going to use factor label method, okay? Because what this really is, is a unit conversion. You're converting grams to moles. That's what you're doing. As long as you know the relationship between the two, you can convert one to the other. And the relationship here is molar mass. Because we calculated earlier that hot water is 18 grams for every mole. So with that in mind, we can easily do this. 1.08 grams of water. We're going to multiply that by a fraction. Okay. I'm going to put one mole up here and 18 grams down here. Why I want to do that is because when I do that, mathematically, grams and grams cancel. And what you have left here is mole. Hey, which is exactly what you want. So in this case, this is 1.08 divided by 18. Okay, 1.08 divided by 18. I said I wasn't going to do any math, but uh, you know what? Let me just do this one with you. So that would be uh, 0 0.06 mole. I hope I didn't make a mistake. Okay, my mental math is like whew, rusty as ever. All right, so that's... How you convert mass to moles. It's really you know, dividing it by molar mass. Let's do another example. Let's go the other way around. Shall we? Let's do another example. Let's say I have 0 0.485 mole of water. Okay. How many grams is that? Okay, same idea here. 0 0.485 mole. I'm going to multiply that by a fraction. I'm going to put mole down here because I know I want them to cancel out later. The unit of desire is mass. So again, mass per mole. Mole, yeah, mass per mole. Because what I know is that for water, for every mole of water, it is equivalent to 18 grams. Moles cancel. And what you have here, of course, is 0 0.485 times 18. 
That is 8.73 grams. Okay. Hopefully you uh you understood how mass and mole or how to change mass to mole and moles to mass, whatever you like. Alright. Let's continue. Let's take a look at another example. Let's go from moles to molecules, shall we? Moles to molecules. We're going from this to this. So that's that's not that's not hard. Uh, let's say I have zero point four eight mole. I want to know how many molecules is that. Notice that I didn't give you a chemical formula. I'm not calculating anything that, you know, that's real or has a chemical behind it. No, no, no. I'm just saying 0.48 moles of whatever you want to think about. I don't care what you think about. It could be eggs. It could be dolls. It could be rice. It could be anything. 0.48 mole. How many molecules? Or in this case, how many particles am I talking about? And if you want, I can put it in. Like, you know, 0.48 moles of oxygen, okay? How many oxygen molecule am I, you know, do I have? Well, 0.48 moles. I'm going to multiply that by a fraction. Is there a relationship that relates moles and molecule? Yes, there is. Okay, is that big number that I said it was the same number as my bank account balance? So, for every mole, there's 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23, in this case, molecule. Okay. Moles and moles cancel, and you are going to get some sort of number, which I'm not going to calculate. All you have to do here is take 0.48 and times this big number. Usually, I like to put this in brackets. And I heard some calculator actually has this number as a... You know, as a constant, just press that number and, you know, there you go. Oh, you know, probably I forgot to mention. This number has a name, man. It has name. The person who, uh, I guess, discovered it or did all the experiments to come up with that, his name is called Avogadro. So this number is called Avogadro's number. Yeah, you know, back in the days, you know, a lot of scientists, they, they like to... uh they like to put their name on their stuff, you know? It's just kind of like their ownership. Hey, that's how it is, man. That's how it is. So, yeah, that's how you find, that's how you change mole to molecules. All right? Can we go the other way around? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, let's take a look at example four. If I have, let's say, 1.86 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules... Uh, I don't know, molecules of CO2. How many mole is that? Again, the relationship here is Avogadro's number. So you take 1.86 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules. And you're going to multiply that by a fraction. You're going to put moles up here. And you're going to put molecules down here. Because that's the relationship, and you want molecules to cancel out. What I know here is that for every mole of anything, it is Avogadro's number worth of molecules. Molecules and molecules cancel, and there you go. Okay? You just take this number, and you divide it by this number. Now, if you're doing this out of a calculator, be careful here. Okay? Put the denominator in brackets at all time. Because if you don't, uh, you can easily just do 1.86 times 10 to the power of 24, divided by 6.02, and then times 10 to the power of 23. Now, that would be silly. Okay, that would be silly. Let's do another example. Example 5. Man, we're already at example 5. Man, time flies. What if I give you mass and I ask you for molecules? Can you do that? I hope you can. Let's do that. 
So I have 5.66 grams of, let's say, carbon dioxide. And I want to know how many molecules that is. How many of these, you know? How many of these? Okay. Shouldn't be hard, right? Because I know how to convert mass to moles. And I know how to convert mass moles to molecules. So I guess this will be a two-step process. And here it is. So 5.66 grams. I'm going to change that to moles. And that is, of course, one mole of carbon dioxide is equivalent to, uh, that's 12 plus 16 plus 16, I hope. So 12, let's see if my, yeah, it's 44. Mm, gotta have, think about that a little bit. Okay, so 5.66 times 1 over 44 grams cancel. And what you have here, of course, is um, 0 0.129 moles. Then I can take the 0 0.129 moles and multiply by 1 mole over Avogadro's number to get molecules. Moles cancel, and you're going to get this big number. That will represent the number of carbon dioxide. How, the amount of molecules of carbon dioxide. Alright. Uh, I don't like to do it that way. You know, that's, you know, that's not environmentally friendly if you think about it. Because you have to do a couple of more. You have to show two steps. You, you have to write this. I don't want to write this. I want to do this you know, in one line. Like how most textbooks would do it. So this is what I like to do. I like to take 5.66 grams and I'm going to multiply by 1 over 44 because that's the molar mass of carbon dioxide. I know grams cancel and I'm left with moles and I need to ask myself is that what I want? Do I want moles? No, 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 no. I don't want moles. I want molecules. So I would multiply by the next fraction that for every mole it is Avogadro's number of molecules. That way, moles cancel, and you're left with molecules. That's exactly what you want, and that will be your answer, which will be the same as this answer. In fact, this may be more accurate if you were to punch things out in your calculator without doing some rounding, because sometimes there are, you know, there are some roundings involved in the middle of the question. Okay, so this is obviously something that I want you guys to get more used to. All right, there's a part B of this question. Part B of this question. So let's take a look at what I want from you in part B of this question. What if I asked you, how many oxygen atoms are there in total? Oxygen atoms. Oh, all right. All right, that's pretty cool. What I do know is that one molecule of CO2 has two oxygen atoms, right? One molecule of CO2 has two oxygen atoms. If I have this many molecules of CO2, how many numbers of atoms? That's right. If one of these carries two oxygen, the amount of these just times two. And that's exactly what you do. Okay, if I were to ask you how many oxygen atoms. So I would do something like this, you know, from the beginning. 5.66 grams, you know, divided by 44 grams cancel. Uh, oh, wait. I like to do this. Yeah. Grams of carbon dioxide. Okay, one mole over 44 grams. So grams and grams cancel. Now, there's a reason why I put carbon dioxide here. Okay, there's a reason. You'll, you'll see, you'll see. And then I'm going to multiply by this many molecules of carbon dioxide. Because that's equivalent to one mole. Moles cancel. And then I'm going to continue. Because what I have right now as my final unit is molecules of carbon dioxide. 
Okay? For every molecule of carbon dioxide exists two oxygen atoms. Right? That's exactly what we said over here, didn't we? That one of these exists two of these. So one molecule of carbon dioxide has two water, two oxygen atom in it. Watch this factor label method. Molecules and molecules cancel. Carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide cancel. So what you're left with here is atoms of O. So this question is really just 5.66 divided by 44 times AVO times 2 will give you the total amount of oxygen in 5.66 grams of carbon dioxide. I think it's pretty neat. I don't know. I, I think it's very neat to look at it that way. All right. One more example. Okay, I guess that's, this is going the other way around. That if you have 1.04 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules of, uh, I don't know, CH4. What's the mass of that? Okay. 